welcome to my channel. I am Andrea and this is Beyond the Pink Door. So today I am making a Sinclair Patterns Harper cardigan and I just decided that I am going to do a tutorial because I talk about this pattern a lot. It's very versatile and it's free, <laughs> which is the important thing. It's a free pattern. So if you go to the Sinclair website, if you sign up to their newsletter, you get this pattern for free. It's amazing. So it comes in a large range of sizes. And what I like about it is it comes in a tall version, a regular version and a petite version, which I really like. So it's all the method is done for you to get the lengths right. So it comes in like a regular length, a long line. I make the long line because I like the coziness of it. And it also comes in like a duster length. It comes with a pocket as well, but I never actually put the pocket on it. And that's simply because I don't like the look of the pocket breaking up the front. So here's one that I made last year and I get so much wear out of this cardigan. So I'll just stand up and show you. So that's the length of it. It's about maybe three inches above my knee. It's got a wide band on the bottom. It's got a band going up front. It's got cuffs on the end of the sleeves and you have the option of pockets and it comes together so so quickly. It's got a quarter inch seam allowance so you can make it completely on your overlocker. Um, as a, Again I always zigzag and then overlock. I'm just a creature of habit but you could make the whole thing on your overlocker and it comes together really really quickly. So I would highly encourage you to go and download the pattern. You will thank me. <laughs> You'll make loads. I have made four. I have two cable knits, so this is one of my favourites. I have a black cable knit as well, which I love. I have a ponte in a teal, and I also have an angora knit, um, and that's in the wash at the moment. So I've been wearing these. Once the weather gets a bit chilly, I like to pop on one of these cardigans. So there's usually one kind of dumped in different places around the house at this stage. And this is the fabric I'm going to use today. So it's this claret cable net. Um, it's out of stock in my shop again, but I am trying to get more of it in. And this is definitely a colour that's going to go with so much in my wardrobe. This ochre is incredibly versatile. It goes beautifully with my myosotis today. So there's little hints of yellow in this dress and this goes beautifully with it. So yeah, I'm going to stop gabbing and I'm going to get on with a bit of sewing. So when I did all my cutting out of my pattern pieces, and I am sorry I didn't film that, I just didn't think about doing this as a tutorial, but I was very careful that when I laid out my fabric that I made sure that when it laid flat that one cable was on top of another cable underneath um, because I didn't do that when I made this cardigan which meant that I have two unsymmetrical fronts. Now I don't think anybody's going to point it out to me but it, it bugs me. So basically when I folded this fabric up it wasn't actually symmetrical. So on my fronts here I have I have the cable going down here and then the cable goes down here so it's not symmetrical but it's done. So it, it taught me a lesson. So when I laid this one out I made sure that it's all symmetrical and then I also went to the trouble of making sure that where this cable is here on the shoulder that it also actually matches up with the back panel as well. Now I don't think it's completely necessary but I had loads of fabric and I just thought right I'm going to make sure that this is a really good job. <laughs> so I'll lay these out and I'll just show you what I mean. So here is my front and this is my shoulder and my other piece underneath is identical so I know that these two cables are matching one on top of each other when I cut it out. And then I kept watching 
the shoulder and the placement of this cable and I positioned the back piece so that now I'm going to when I sew my shoulder seams together I'll have a cable running all the way through so I just think that's a nice little bit of detail and also another thing to say as well that you know don't be afraid cutting out the cable knit it's not actually knitted so it's not going to unravel it's just like cutting out a french terry or a just a sweatshirting fabric really it doesn't it's just because it says it's a cable knit it's not actually knitted <laughs> so i've just pinned my shoulder se seams together it's a really sunny day today again uh, every time i sit at my sewing machine to do a sew along so this is more of a sew along than a tutorial really um the sun comes out and I only realise that when I'm doing the editing of these videos. So anyway, we certainly won't be complaining about the sun. I've taken off the cardigan, it's too warm. So I've pinned my shoulder seams together. I'm going to zigzag them. So I prefer to use a zigzag stitch on these cable knits. So I've set my zigzag to three and three. So it's three long and three wide. And just for reference, when I'm sewing a straight seam, so just a normal flat seam with a straight stitch, I would use a 3.5. So I'm going to sew the shoulder seams and I'm going to overlock them. So when I was threading my overlocker today, I realized that um, I only had one spool of thread that actually matched this. So what I've done is I have just put it into I've just put one maroon, I don't even know how I had that, and I put black into the other ones. So that one is for, say, the left-hand looper. So it's the looper that's difficult to thread if your thread breaks, basically. So it's the, it's the left one, this one. <laughs> so um, I've done a little test on it, and I realised that when I sew, the underneath is completely just that threads which is great so my plan is these are all just seams that i'm going to to press just one direction and i generally press everything to the back so what i'll do on the shoulder is i will sew it say on the back so then on the front is going to be the wine color and then i'll just press that to one side and i'll do the same on the side seams i will overlock on the black on the back <laughs> and so I'll press it one direction and say when I'm overlocking the armholes I will overlock from the sleeve part if that makes sense so at least when you look into the cardigan it's all overlocked in the wine color so that's the plan <laughs> so here is the overlocking I don't know if you can see that but that's the that's what you're going to see from the front and then it is black at the back. So the shoulder seam seems done and like most stretch patterns the next thing to do is to put the sleeves in. So I am really satisfied with my shoulder seam so my cables matched up really nicely there. So on the pattern it has a notch at the top of the sleeve and it actually tells you that this is the front and this goes towards the back. So it's a matter of matching up this top notch and the notch for the front and pinning it in and whizzing around on the sewing machine and then the overlocker. So I've got my sleeve pinned in there. Now I have my two sleeves in and I've ironed the seam into the sleeve so when you look at the cardigan it looks like it's all overlocked in wine thread so the next thing to do is to do the side seam so basically from the cuff to the armpit and down to the end so I am going to pin the sleeve seam first And we're going to sew all the way down. So pop in a couple of pins. It all magically lines up. It's a really good 
pattern. There's no easing, there's no messing, there's no trying to make seams fit. Um, I think this is a great pattern for beginners. In no time at all you have a cardigan and it's so satisfying <laughs> and you will wear it to death come autumn and winter. I don't know if I mentioned but I'm making a size 12 and I'm making it in the petite version so I'm really really happy with that fit. So I've got this pinned now so from the cuff all the way down to the hem so again I am going to sew these I'm going to zigzag and overlock. Again, as I say, you could make the entire thing on your overlocker, just I'm having a few tension issues with it at the moment and I'm just not terribly pleased with it. But I prefer to zigzag and overlock anyway. So I'm gonna do that. So we almost have a cardigan, it's that quick. So this is a good time to check the length of the sleeve. Now, this being the petite size, it's perfect. So it's just, to here and then of course we have the cuff. So to do the cuff we are going to put the short sides together and sew along on the two of them and then I'll be back to put them on the end of the sleeve. Now so the side seam of the cuff is sewn and obviously there's no need to overlock and then kind of fold it up so that it's double thickness and what I do with where the seam is, because it can get quite bulky, is I'll push one seam one way and then I'll push the other seam the other way. And that's just to make it less thick for the sewing machine to go over. So I'm going to put a pin through that seam and then I'm going to make sure that my edges are even. And I'm going to mark the half waypoint and I have my sleeve here and I've turned my cardigan inside out. I have my seam here and I'm going to mark my fold, my halfway point here as well. Whoops. Okay, there goes a pin. So I'm just pinning it there. So my seam and my halfway point. And you very simply pop your cuff into your seam or into your sleeve, matching up those seams. I get very confused between sleeves and seams. And I am matching up now my seam. <laughs> I'm going to put a pin through there, and then I'm putting my two pins here together. So I have my halfway mark on the cuff and on the sleeve. And pinning those. So it's a matter of making sure that you have your three edges of your fabric even up here and then sew around. So I'm going to sew on the cuff side around and then I'm going to overlock. So here's the bottom bend and I have it pinned in half and I just thought I would highlight this, that there's a right and a wrong way for the cable. So they go up and they go down. So this is obviously the right way. And this is the wrong way. So just at this stage, then just check that you are putting it the right way up. So again, I've, met, I've marked my halfway mark here. So this is the front of the cardigan and this is the halfway mark in the middle of the back. And then here's the halfway mark on the bend. So there's only a small little difference between the length of the bend. So once you know that this is matching up, turn them and pin them across. And I always doubt myself that I have it done right, so I'm going to just turn and check. And yes, they're all going in the same direction. So I'm going to keep pinning and then I'm going to sew and I'm going to overlock. 
Our front band comes in two pieces and we join the two together. So again, I have double checked that my cables are going in the right direction up the front of the cardigan. So I'm going to sew across here. sides together and we're going to sew across. So this is the part that's at the hem of the cardigan. So we're going to do that for the two of them and then we're going to turn it right way out and then I like to press it. So here's the front bend and I have just, I've pressed it so there's a nice fold here, a nice crease and I've also popped in a few pins all the way down as well. And I was just having a look at the front and the back, or the back and the front, just to decide which side I actually wanted to be out. So I've decided on this one because I think the cable is nicely, it's going to be nicely centred by the time the seam allowance is taken. I've got a pin here in the centre of the back neck and I'm going to pin that onto the seam of the band. Again, I've put the seams of the band in two different directions. And then I'm going to go to the other end here and pin this. Now I don't put any ease, just pin that in place. And then what I tend to do is just let it flop down, give it a little stretch and coming up the front of the cardigan here, you don't want to have too much of a stretch. So I'm going to just pin where I can see that it's straight and then we have the shaping of the neck or the shaping of the front here, the kind of v-neck of the front of the cardigan. Just give it, give the band a little stretch out, pop in a pin here at the shoulders and then just stretch it out. And pop in another couple of pins. And then do that again from the centre back all the way down the other front. And now we're ready to sew from one end to the other end and overlock it. And then hey presto, we have a cardigan. There we have it. We have a cardigan. How fast is that? That is the most satisfying project ever. So I hope that you enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope that the few little tips, I think definitely the Keeping the cable going in the right direction is a good tip. I've made a few, I've made all the mistakes, so I'm passing on the knowledge. So I think it looks lovely. The only other little thing that I do is just at the very bottom, I've just sewn a little bit of a top stitch and that just keeps it sitting that little bit better down there. 
I have my Ponte version here. I love this one as well. It's slightly lighter, of course. This is just so cozy. And what I did on this one was I top stitched there, you can see just where the, the band joins the front. I top stitched that and that just makes that all sit really nicely. So this is much, much lighter to work with than this. Um, so I don't think this one needs top stitching. I think this looks okay. So I made the other size 12 and I made it from a meter and a half of fabric. And I didn't have to do any pattern Tetris. It all just fit lovely in the meter and a half. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. That is going to be a great addition to my wardrobe. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.